Hey beautiful and happy almost holidays! Today we're making this fluffy chocolate bouche de noel or yule log which is perfect to serve for Christmas dinner. Our very first step is preparing the chocolate shards because it takes a while to set. Melt 4 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate and then pour it onto a sheet of parchment paper. I place two knives on the edges of the paper to make sure it holds in place. You're then going to want to take an offset spatula and do your best to spread out an even layer. Make sure it's not too thin or too thick. Take one end of the parchment paper and start rolling it up over itself like so. Carefully put this in the fridge for at least 30 minutes or while we prepare the rest of our cake. We're making a light and airy sponge cake, so the first thing we're going to do is crack and separate four eggs. The egg whites should be in a medium bowl and place the egg yolks in a large bowl. Now, before we start whipping the egg whites, add just a little bit of cream of tartar, but you can also use vinegar or lemon juice, and this is going to stabilize the egg whites. Go ahead and whip the egg whites until you've formed soft peaks, which basically means that the whites droop just a little bit but still maintain their structure. Once you've reached the desired texture, go ahead and set the bowl aside for a few moments. Take the large bowl with the egg yolks and start whisking until frothy. Gradually add in the granulated sugar and continue to whip these ingredients until your mixture has become pale and bubbly. Take your time with this step. At this point, we're going to add the dry ingredients. Add in the all-purpose flour, then the cornstarch, which is optional but highly recommended. Sift the ingredients together. Then add in the cocoa powder. I'm using dark cocoa powder, but any unsweetened cocoa powder should work just as well. Finally, add in the baking powder, coffee granules, and salt. You absolutely will not be able to taste the coffee, we're just using a little bit to intensify the chocolate flavor. Use a spatula to fold these ingredients together and take your time with this because it is extremely sticky and difficult to work with right now. You're going to want to make sure that these ingredients have been somewhat well incorporated and at this point we're going to start adding in the egg whites. So add them in in thirds and fold them until you have a cohesive batter. This is extremely important, so remember not to overmix the batter because it will deflate it and beat out all the air that we just spend so much time incorporating. Now pour the batter onto a half sheet pan which should be lined with parchment paper. You can also use binder clips like I did to secure the paper in place. Use your spatula to spread out an even layer of the cake batter but don't spend too much time because we don't want to get rid of any of the bubbles or air in the batter. Make this at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius for only about 6-7 to seven minutes or until you press the cake slightly and it bounces back up. Allow the cake to cool for no longer than one minute and then we're going to be transferring the cake onto a towel which should be well dusted with powdered sugar. Carefully peel the parchment paper off. The cake is really delicate so don't be aggressive or else the cake may break apart. And the cake should still be really warm at this point. Roll the towel along with the cake and then keep it like this until it has cooled down completely for at least 30 minutes. While the cake is cooling, we can prepare the whipped cream filling. In a large bowl, add in the heavy whipping cream and beat this with an electric mixer until bubbly and thick. We're then going to add in the powdered sugar and continue to whip the cream until you formed stiff peaks. And if you would like, you could totally double up on the cream and have extra filling in your bouche de noel. 
Once your cake has been cooled completely, unroll it from the towel. Spread all of the whipped cream on top of the cake. You can leave a slight border on all of the edges since it's easier to roll up that way and we will be trimming it out anyway. And just like all my other videos, you can find the full recipe in the description box down below. After the cream has been spread out, roll it back up but this time without the towel and just refrigerate this for 10 minutes to let the cream set. While we let the cake chill, we can take out the chocolate that we were working with earlier. Start unrolling the parchment paper and the chocolate will start breaking up into shards. And do not worry about imperfect pieces because the less even it is, the more natural it's going to look. The parchment paper might be a little tricky to unroll because the chocolate has solidified, so make sure to take your time during this step. Once you've unrolled your parchment paper, you might be left with some really large shards that might not fit on the cake, so you can definitely break it apart further or use a knife to cut them into smaller pieces. Now it's time for my personal favorite step, which is assembling the cake. Take a little bit of melted chocolate and spread out an even layer on each of the chocolate shards and then start sticking it onto the cake. You can also use chocolate frosting instead of melted chocolate if you would like. Now decorate it with any toppings that you might have. I'm using rosemary and a couple of strawberries, but you can definitely use anything you'd like. And that is it. Top it off with some powdered sugar to resemble a snowfall and enjoy.